Welcome to West 57th. I'm Karen Burns. Our first story tonight is about a boy you've probably all come to know and to respect. He first captured people's hearts four years ago when his battle with AIDS and his fight to remain in school became front page news. His name is Ryan White and he is now 17. Next week, Ryan will appear in a made-for-TV movie about his life. But while he has become a public figure, he has remained a very private person. Before you see him again, this time out on the circuit publicizing his movie, we wanted you to know a little more about this one boy who inspires so many. How do you handle, um, like, having AIDS? I try to put it back in my mind, and I try to just live my life like everybody else does. The fifth graders at this public school in New York couldn't have asked for a better teacher than Ryan White. How does it feel that you've lived this long? Well, I'm happy about it. Um, but um, I, from the very beginning, I, I said I was going to fight this disease and I was going to win. He's understated and direct, so much so that it's easy to forget that he's talking about his own life. Aren't you scared at night that you think that you're not going to wake up in the morning? Oh, at first I was, but I'm not really now. Because my mother told me we're all going to die someday, so just to step up to it. From the very first, you know, he asked me, am I going to die? And this was when he was first diagnosed. He said, am I going to die? And I thought, gosh, how am I going to answer this? And he, I said, we're all going to die someday. We just don't know when. When Jeannie White was told her son had AIDS, doctors gave him six months to live. That was in 1984. Ryan is a hemophiliac who got AIDS from contaminated blood products meant to control his bleeding. As soon as his illness became public, his hometown of Kokomo, Indiana, panicked. Believing that Ryan would infect his classmates with the deadly AIDS virus, the community banned him from school. I don't think he should be here. If people with chicken pox and measles can't come, why should he? There's been a lot of rumors that um, when he gets mad, he spits on people. They call you a queer or stuff like that. And you get people who throw away your dishes. Throw away your dishes? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Because, you know, I mean, I wouldn't want really to eat off somebody else's dish either. You know, and it's been washed, so that's all there is to it. If it wasn't washed, I wouldn't eat off of it either. <laughs> no. But is it fear? Is it prejudice? Is it cruelty? What do you think it is? In I think it's a little bit of everything. Cruelty, um, I think it just, it comes with the fear and the prejudice. You know, it's just, they don't know what else to do, so they'd be cruel. They're cruel, you know. Despite the hostility he faced, Ryan still wanted to go to school. But the more he persisted, the more he became a target. He was hounded and harassed, and then came the violence. People slashed the white tires and shot a bullet through their living room window. It's very upsetting to think that your child has to go through that. And I did not want him to go through that. And I said, Ryan, do you really want to go to school that bad? And he said, yes. In August of 1985, Ryan took his case to court. His nine-month battle sparked protests, boycotts, and parents' meetings. You guarantee that my daughter will not get AIDS by helping If you can't, then he shouldn't be in school. I don't want to take the chance of my child being right next to him and maybe accidentally being sneezed on. You know, I can't blame them for being scared because it was new to everybody at the time. And... You know, when you don't know about something, you're, you're going to be afraid of it. Yeah, but that's at 13 quite a heavy thing to find out, that people can hate you just for being sick or different. Yeah, well, they really didn't hate me. The, um, they just, you know, they were afraid of me. And eventually, you know, it got to the point where they didn't want anything to do with me there. They just wanted to, you know, keep me out no matter what. 25 of his classmates decided to stay away for fear of catching the deadly disease. When most of Kokomo turned away from Ryan, the spotlight turned on him. At the height of the AIDS scare, one small boy's struggle with AIDS became a nation's obsession. What did you think when you saw your son on the cover of People magazine? Well, Ryan was very sick at that time, and I thought, you know, if you're going to be on the cover of a magazine, you want a portrait of your child, you know, really healthy and looks good. But that wasn't what he was. Swept up by media and celebrities, Ryan made a decision to focus the attention he got on his disease. 
He took aid center stage at a benefit given for him by Elton John. Goodbye, Mama Jean. Oh, I never knew what all you had to do is to pull the sand for those around you. All you can get out of an association with Ryan White and his whole family, there's a sense of smallness. Ryan White is an example of probably the most tremendous courage and, and tremendous dignity that uh, a young person could have possibly shown in his life after being shown, shown such bigotry and such abuse. Dalton John says you've taught him a lot. What do you think you've taught him? That, you know, you have to be a fighter. And, you know, no matter what people say about you, you still have to stand up for what you know is right. In the spring of 1986, Ryan finally won one fight, his right to return to school. <coughs> but he began to lose his battle with AIDS. He was vomiting every 20 minutes, and his weight was down to 60 pounds. It was then that he told his mother he didn't want to die in Kokomo. I really didn't feel like he had much longer to live, probably. Deep down, I really didn't think he did. Why didn't you want him to die there? Uh, I didn't think... Uh... I wanted it to be in a happier place. Not where there was so much bitter and hostility. Um... I, I felt like Kokomo needed a break from us as much as we needed a break from Kokomo. Seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind. Ryan found a cemetery he liked in nearby Cicero, and with a loan from Elton John, the Whites made the 25-mile move. Here, they were welcomed. Whether it was a sympathetic community or Ryan's own will, his health steadily improved. And finally, he was ready to try a new school. Were you nervous at all this morning? Oh, yeah. I was terribly nervous. What do you feel like now? I feel really good about this school. I like it a lot. Did you believe it at first? Not really, you know. And when I went home that night, I just, I couldn't believe it. That they were so, I said, Mom, they were all really nice. And it was just so amazing. Jill Stewart, a friend and neighbor, remembers Ryan's first day at school. He came on his guard. He was apprehensive. And it used to be an awkward thing that, He'd just be like, thank you for just letting me be here. And you're like, Ryan, you know, we want you here. And so I know that what I, how he didn't expect it to be like it was. I'm teacher number four. What have they given you, these kids? Well, you know, it's given me the more positive attitude, of course. And, you know, just to feel like you're not fighting it alone. You've got other people fighting it with you. Yeah, right. What if you have a negative times negative? Accepted at last, still Ryan chose not to spend his free time like other kids, but rather to intensify his crusade. Because of the lack of education on AIDS, discrimination, fear, panic, and lies surrounded me. I became the target of Ryan White jokes. I was labeled a troublemaker, my mom an unfit mother, and I was not welcome anywhere. Last summer, Ryan spoke to a convention of 10,000 teachers at the Superdome. It was, he said, a group that needed educating. Save the children of tomorrow. Ryan, who are you doing this for, the speaking? Well, basically for everyone who has AIDS. You know, people just aren't listening, and we have to make them listen. Do you think you're finally getting it across? Yeah, I think a lot more people are not afraid of AIDS now, and they're not afraid of someone who has it. And I think they're more willing to accept people who have AIDS. Good. That's fine. Stay right there. That's good. After four years of speaking out, Ryan White had become a celebrity himself. But the fame he's received has exacted a price. I think he's just tired of being known as the AIDS boy, really. And he's known everywhere he goes. And the signing of autographs and all that, I think that's fun at first. But I think that it gets old because then it's like, why are you signing autographs? It's because I have AIDS. What do you think all of this being in the spotlight has done to you? You know, it's opened up a lot of your private life, and you know, you can, there's not a whole lot you can do without somebody wanting something to do with it. Does it take away the kind of feeling of having a normal life that you've worked so hard to achieve? Yeah, but you know, someday everybody's going to listen, and it's going to be over, and I feel like we've done our job.
Then you'll stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> you must hope that soon. Yeah. Hi. Can I get some comics? All the way upstairs. I'll take the elevator. Yeah, I don't feel so good. Next week, Ryan will make his acting debut, playing a small role in a TV movie about his life. You want to say something else? Uh, okay. Why should I get one? Say, no way. What for? Why do I need one? Ryan coached the actor who played him, working 13-hour days over his summer vacation. For Ryan, this is the culmination of everything he's worked for. Action. You ought to get one. Do you ever wonder why all this happened to you? Maybe it happened to me so it wouldn't happen to anybody else. I don't know. Ryan, you have had extraordinary success fighting this disease. Do you think you can keep fighting it? Well, I'm going to give him my best shot. Ryan has come a long way from his days in Kokomo, and while he may not be winning the fight against AIDS, right now he's holding his own. With help from the drug AZT, he's survived longer than most of the country's 83,000 AIDS victims. Jeannie White is hoping her son lives long enough to see a cure, but she's also realistic. I've had him with me four years now, where we thought that he wasn't going to live. And I feel like we've had a miracle even with four years. So, and would that be enough if that's all you had? Well, no. Is anything ever enough? Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did